What is going on, wonderful people? This is Medicosis Perfectionist, where medicine makes perfect sense. This is my comparisons playlist. Today's video is a comparison between neonatal respiratory distress syndrome, which is evil, and transient tachypnea of the newborn, which is kind of benign. With that said, now let's get started. When the baby is born, it's a neonate. If the entire body of the baby is blue, you have two possibilities. It could be a respiratory disease or a cyanotic congenital heart disease. How do I tell the difference between heart or lungs? Easy. Try to replace the job of the lung and see what happens. Give 100% oxygen. If it improves, oh, that was the lung's problem because it was corrected with oxygen. If it did not improve, that's a cyanotic congenital heart disease, such as tricuspid atresia, tetralogy of fallow, TAPVR, transposition of great vessels, and truncus arteriosus. Let's talk about respiratory problems. It could be a problem in the airways or a problem in the lungs. Problem in the lungs could be respiratory distress syndrome, transient tachypnea of the newborn, meconium aspiration, or persistent pulmonary hypertension. Today, we'll compare between the first two. RDS, TTN, MAS, PPHN. Now, we have talked about both of these diseases in detail in previous videos. You'll find transient tachypnea of the newborn video in my playlist called 5-Minute Review. And you'll find my neonatal respiratory distress syndrome video in my pulmonology playlist. So this is a very quick review. Transient tachypnea of the newborn, the baby is full term. It happens during the first day, probably during the first two hours after birth. Basically, there are fluids in the lungs. This is delayed clearance. Just give it some time. The baby will clear the fluids and everything will be hunky-dory. Signs and symptoms, transient tachypnea, increased breathing effort, diffuse crackles, maybe diminished respiratory sounds. Diagnosis is clinically. When you do an x-ray, you'll find increased lung volumes and fluid in lung fissures because of delayed clearance. Treatment, self-limiting disease, so don't worry about it. Supportive care and supplemental oxygen and everything will be good, hopefully. Here is the F mnemonic for TTN. It happens during the first day of life. To a full-term neonate, there is fluids in the lungs due to delayed clearance. On x-ray, you'll see fissures filled with fluids. On auscultation, you'll hear diffuse crackles, and it's a fart in the wind. It's a self-limiting condition. Next, neonatal RDS is caused by the lack of surfactant. And as you know, surfactant is anti-surface tension. How does the pin float on the surface of the water, even though the density of the pin is greater than the density of the water? Easy. Surface tension between the air and the water interface. What do you have in your lungs? I have air, I have water. Oh, so there is an interface and there is surface tension between the air and the water. That's right. This can lead to surface tension. That's true. Surface tension can collapse your lungs. Oops, how can I prevent this? Thankfully, you have a surfactant. You should thank your type 2 pneumocytes. How do I know that the baby has enough surfactant? There is something called the lecithin sphingomyelin ratio. You want it to be 2 or greater. But what if the baby is born immaturely? Well, there was no enough time to make surfactant, especially if mommy has diabetes because diabetes in the mother will lead to hyperglycemia in the mother, which will lead to proliferation of the beta cells of the pancreas of the baby. The baby will make too much insulin. Insulin is anti-surfactant. C-section can be a risk factor due to lack of stress. Mommy has diabetes, mommy has hyperglycemia. Glucose will flow from mommy to the baby via the placenta. Now, if the baby has tons of glucose, the baby will react by secreting more insulin from the beta cells of the pancreas. Insulin is anti-surfactant. Insulin is bad for surfactant, but these three hormones are good for surfactant. And that's why the treatment of neonatal RDS is to give steroids. Neonatal RDS, there is no surfactant, surface tension will try to collapse your lungs. Your lungs are dark and airless. Your alveoli have collapsed, aka atelectasis. Protein is gonna leak out of the vessels. Oh, protein is pink under the microscope. That's why we call it the hyaline membrane disease. In neonatal RDS, the symptoms happen within minutes after birth, early onset tachypnea, respiratory difficulty, grunting, intercostal retractions, maybe acidosis, maybe alkalosis, depending on tachypnea or bradypnea, cyanosis, and maybe intraventricular hemorrhage. Diagnosis, ABG, chest x-ray will show you ground glass and fine reticular granularity, and air bronchograms, the biopsy, hyaline membrane disease. Neonatal RDS is a terrible disease, can lead to death, 
acid-based disturbances. The doctors will give you too much insulin, which has side effects. It can lead to bronchopulmonary dysplasia, retinopathy of prematurity, etc. And neonatal RDS can keep your ductus arteriosus open. More complications include necrotizing enterocolitis, pulmonary hemorrhage, alveolar air leak causing pneumothorax, edema, ileus, oligoria, etc. How do I prevent it? Avoid unnecessary C-sections. Before birth, give steroids. After birth, give surfactant. Let's compare between the two. Neonatal RDS, preterm baby, but TTN, full-term neonate. What's the cause? Decrease surfactant. What's the cause? Fluids in the lungs due to delayed clearance. Risk factors, preterm, male, maternal diabetes, C-section. Here, premature delivery, male sex, maternal asthma or maternal diabetes, C-section, small for gestational age, or on the contrary, macrosomia. The onset of symptoms within minutes or hours. Here, this within the first two hours. Clinically, tachypnea, increased breathing effort, cyanosis, hypoxia, grunting, etc. Here, tachypnea, increased breathing effort, diffuse crackles. Chest x-ray, ground glass, and air bronchograms. Here you have fissures filled with fluid. How do I treat RDS? Give surfactant and... You will probably need mechanical ventilation, but transient tachypnea of the newborn is self-limiting. Just provide supportive care. Complications of neonatal RDS including patent ductus arteriosus, pneumothorax, bronchopulmonary dysplasia, necrotizing enterocolitis, etc. TTN has no complications in the vast majority of cases. It's a fart in the wind. Let's review neonatal RDS from Picmonic. There is fetal lung immaturity due to lack of surfactant. There is respiratory distress, intercostal retractions, nasal flaring and grunting noise. What should I do? Give surfactant, give oxygen and mechanically ventilate. You can consider total parenteral nutrition as well. If you like this video, you will adore my antibiotics course available at medicosisperfectsnetis.com. Comes with 40 videos, questions, cases, my ultimate notebook, and mind map. Talking about antibacterials, antifungals, antivirals, and antiparasitic medications. Thank you for watching. Please subscribe, hit the bell, and click on the join button. You can support me here or here. Go to my website, download my premium courses. Go to Picmonic for animated medical mnemonics. Be safe, stay happy, study hard. This is Medicosis Perfectionalis, where medicine makes perfect sense.